Hello, thank you. Welcome, Ryan. We have Ryan Avery yeah. with us, and I have questions ready here. Um, thank you, Ryan, for coming. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. <laughs> sure. And um, I, I would like to start with uh, some questions about you know your current life. So one question that uh, we have is, what are the top three life lessons that help you grow into who you are today? What is one of the top life lessons? Uh, what are the three top, top life lessons? Mm, my three top life lessons are, the first is you have to believe in yourself before anyone else is going to believe you. Mm -hmm. So you have to have that belief that you can do it. And when you do have that belief, that's when every other domino falls down. So you've got to have that belief in yourself. The second thing is you have to surround yourself with the right people. Uh, making sure that you're surrounded with people who are better than you, faster than you, smarter than you, richer than you, happier than you, all of the above. So that way you can make sure that you're learning from those people and feeding from those people. And then also making sure the third thing is always be adding value. So when you're adding value and you're around the people that are making you stronger and better and you believe in yourself, the possibilities are endless. Those would be my top three. Very nice. <laughs> uh, and, and what motivates you to keep speaking? That's a great question. What motivates me to keep speaking is I love to teach. Teaching is my passion. And what speaking allows me to do is it allows me to teach people from all different cultures all over the world, from small groups to large groups. And it always makes my day different. So I'm, I'm always teaching. And part of teaching means you have to be learning. So when I'm going and speaking, I'm, I, even though I might be teaching a crowd or an audience, I'm also learning because I might be speaking in China one week and Australia the next, and they're very different audiences. Or I might be speaking in Nebraska, and I might then go and speak to New York, and those two audiences are very different. So learning how to deliver messages and communicate is... It's really fun for me. And then also it's, it's really powerful to be able to teach people something that they can use to make themselves better or their company stronger. Mm -hmm. I, I think that um, you said your motto, I, I heard you say in your video, your motto is to have fun and mm -hmm. help other people. Yeah, great. Absolutely. As long, that's what I have on the top of my to-do list every day is have fun and help others. As long as I can have fun and help others, I feel really successful. And that's what speaking allows me to do. I'm, I'm having fun and I'm helping others. I, I think it's such a great gift. And I think you're, you're a living example of, you know, you can spend so many hours working, but having fun doing that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's great. Uh, another question that we have actually is here is, what is the quantum theory of professional public speaking? What is the quantum theory of professional speaking? Yes. And what would, what, how, can you break that down to a simpler question for me? I am, I'm not that smart. <laughs> I, I'm not that smart myself. And <laughs> it, 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 uh, it, so I, because I wanted the, the questions to benefit many people and not myself. Actually, yeah. I, gather multi I gather questions from multiple people, and this came up as one of the questions. <laughs> oh, I see. All right, well, let's, let's break it down. Quantum theory. Um, I'm going to say that that means, <laughs> I have no idea what that means. So I'm going to have to say, like, what is, what is the core of public speaking? We'll say that. And for the... The person who asked this question and is listening now, um, uh, I will do my best to answer this question. So what's the quantum theory? What's the core of public speaking? The core of public speaking is making sure you add value at the beginning, middle, and end. So what so many speakers do uh, and why they don't grow, why they don't get booked again is because you save the value towards the end and you, you feel like that surprise is good. Uh, but really it's the value throughout that they need, that they want, that they crave, that makes you a great speaker. One of the best things that I heard from Simon Sinek mm -hmm. is if you make them feel motivated in the moment, 
you are a good speaker. If you make them feel motivated after the event, you are a great speaker. And those of us who want to be legacy speakers, those of us who want to be the top of the top, he says those of those who become the legacy speakers are those who make people feel motivated to share your message to help others. So when you add value throughout and you add value from the beginning, middle and end, and you make them feel motivated to take action and share your strategies with others, you're becoming a legacy speaker. And that would be, in my opinion, the quantum theory of public speaking. <laughs> That's a great answer. <laughs> Uh, you, you are reminding me of your, um, I, I don't know if you can call it a logo, but A to the, A to the. Yeah, absolutely, A to B. A to B. And I think that when you start believing in yourself as not just a speaker, but the speaker, mm -hmm. and giving values the way uh, you just explained. <laughs> I think, I think, I think that will make a huge world of difference. Is is, is that's what's running my mind right now? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Wow. Okay. Well, um, delving into now more of the world champion of public speaking section. Mm -hmm. um, I, some questions that we have here. I'll start with one. Uh, knowing what you know now, what would you do differently in preparing your speech for the competition that wows? What would I do differently that I didn't do back in the World Championship to make my speech wow? Well, here's one difference is you don't want to make your speech wow. You want to make it valuable. So that would be the difference is... What a lot of speakers will do, they'll go, how am I going to make this funny or make them cry or make it so intense that it's the best or make them wow. Now that I get on stage, I ask myself, what's the way to make this speech the most valuable? So what I would say to the person who asked that question is, instead of thinking of the wow, think of the value and think about how much value you can add throughout the talk. That's what I would change is I wouldn't think about how... I can look good, I would help others get good. That's what I would do. Um, okay. And how many hours and how many club evaluations were involved before <laughs> <laughs> before you won that world championship? Um, so I competed during my first year and I received over a thousand evaluations and I gave the talk hundreds of times to literally countless uh, clubs. I sometimes would go to 11 different clubs a week. Um, so it really, really varied, and it was a lot. It was thousands of evaluations, hundreds of talks, all different er variations. I, I gave speeches on planes, in restaurants, in, uh, in the middle of uh, Portland and downtown, like all over the place, anywhere and everywhere I could to get better at delivering my message. <laughs> you surely killed every fear possible. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. Uh, and and you 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 did it. You did the. You you made a mark as the youngest ever to win the world public world championship of public speaking. Yes. And and for now, I have <laughs> yes. <to keep> it. <laughs> and, and I think you have a Guinness World Record as well. Um, being, being the yeah, youngest I like player. to break. I like to break world records. Um, my wife and I. That's one of our hobbies is breaking world records. And the latest one that we did is uh, we're the youngest couple to professionally speak on all seven continents. <laughs> I, I I am yet to wait. Who can break that record? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's fun to set them because then what happens or break them because what happens is get somebody else interested and that's the hope of doing these world records is to inspire other people to say well if they could do it we could do it and so I do hope someone breaks the world championship record I hope an 18 year old wins right I, I hope that a couple comes together and says no I want to speak on every continent that's the point of why I want to do that is to inspire people to say alright Ryan and Chelsea can do this and I can too 
Are you working on your next next one that will inspire others? I am, yes. Um, we have a couple world records in the works right now. Um, we have one coming up in next February. Uh, we're going to break the world record for the largest book pyramid in history. Um, and I'm unfortunately able to share too many details on it, um, of who we're breaking it with and how many books it's going to be. But all I can say is it's going to be epic and massive and one of the coolest events that we put together. Um, and then we're working on a couple others um, that involve with food with some of my clients that I'm a keynote speaker with. <laughs> food. Food related, <laughs> that, that, yeah. That's interesting. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I cannot wait to find out once you break the world record. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we'll share them all on my social media, and uh, I'll make sure I keep everybody posted on what we're doing and how we're doing it and uh, on my website as well. Awesome. That's awesome. Uh, and um, <laughs> the next question um, is, what was your greatest challenge in transitioning from Toastmasters to professional? Yeah, there's a very different aspect of what a Toastmaster speech does versus what professional does. And the, one of the biggest differences is in length of time, right? So most Toastmaster speeches are about five to seven minutes, whereas in most professional keynotes are anywhere between 45 to 90 minutes. So being able to go and almost, you know, more than double the length of time, like triple, quadruple, all amount of time that you have to speak, it was a really hard transition for me. Um, and I remember getting my first keynote book, and they're like, we need you to talk for an hour. And I was freaking out because I'm like, how the heck am I going to talk for an hour? I've, I've worked eight months to prepare these, this, these seven minutes. Uh, so I don't even know how I'm going to do this. So that was the hardest transition for me. And what I did is, and what I continue to do is I watch other speakers, I read a lot of books, I look at TED Talks, I uh, dissect a lot of keynotes every week on what they did wrong, what they didn't do, what, um, what I could do, how I could use that for my style, and that's how I learn, is I, I learn from watching others and then seeing what they do or don't do that I could do and incorporate into my talks. Mm. Do you ever... Uh... Do you ever fight through negative thoughts? Uh, um, yeah, absolutely. Of course, I'm human, right? Um, so one of the things that we do, Chelsea and I, is we make sure we talk out loud as if the event already happened or the keynote already happened. So right before I go out on stage, Chelsea will go, how'd it go today? And I go, oh, it went so great. We had so much fun. We, uh, The audience laughed. I had a good time. They took a lot of notes. I added the most value. I was the best keynote speaker that they ever had. There was a standing ovation. People were so excited, and I really connected with them, and it, it was great. And then all of a sudden, I, I go out and I do it, and what I do is I don't have any negativity in my head anymore. I think, oh, I've already done this. All i got to do it is one more time. We always do it better the second time, right? So when you have negative thoughts creep in, talk out loud as if it already happened, and it will subdue the, the negative things that you have going on in your mind. So would you say this is the uh, pre-speech routine that you do for every speaking engagement? Oh yeah, I do it every time I talk, absolutely. Uh, so, so you're really, uh, you're, 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 you're using the power of mind to, to prepare, pre prepare for what you will actually receive as a result. <laughs> exactly. Yep. So I visualize it. I've already experienced it. So then when I go out, I'm like, oh, well, I've already, I've already done this today. I'll do it all over again. My energy's high and I'm excited. And yeah, absolutely. It's absolutely. Again, it goes back to those, you have to believe you before anyone else is going to believe you. So you have to believe that you can't do it. Mm. That's, that's one, one of the things that I teach people too is, You've heard this phrase, fake it till you make it. Mm -hmm. Well, I disagree with that. And I say you have to do it until you make it. And so you're not faking anything by going out on stage. You're actually doing it. There's no faking. Part of doing it is messing up. Part of doing it is learning how to get over the negative voices in your head. So there is no faking. I don't fake anything. 
I do a lot of things, and because I've done those things, it's allowed me to make it in certain areas. So part of doing it is messing up, doing all those things, so do it until you make it. Uh, I'm, I'm soaking a lot in, in right now. Good. <laughs> Way to mess me up. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Do you have one more thing that you think is very important that is overlooked in the public speaking uh, industry? And one thing that's overlooked in the public speaking industry, hmm, I would say, I, I know I've been saying it, but I still don't see enough people getting it, that it's all about value. And it's about adding value to the audience at hand throughout the entire time. So yeah, you can entertain them. Yeah, you can make them feel good or motivated. But when they walk away with handfuls of strategies that they can instantly implement that makes their life better, that's when you're going to grow your business. That's when you're going to be more recognizable. That's when you're going to be invited to speak more. Uh, that's when a lot of opportunities are going to open up to you because there's not enough speakers adding enough value. So add value as much as you can. And what value is, is something they can use. That's what value is. Value is something they can use. So something they can take from what you say and use it to make their life better. Add as much of that into your presentation and you will be booked for years and years to come. It's mm. so very valuable. <laughs> oh, well, I just use the word value in there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> You know, for people like myself who is uh, pursuing to become a professional speaker, what mm. kind of advice would you give? Uh, I, I know value was a huge one, massive one. Yeah, to, the best value I would do is go out and get some speeches, like as many and as often as you can. And... Uh, go and talk to Rotary, Kiwanis. I mean, this is how I started. I started with Toastmasters, then I went to Rotary, then I went to Kiwanis, and I remember to this day the first time I got paid $200 to give a talk, and I thought I was the richest person in the world, <laughs> right? So go and start where you can get as many speeches as you can talking in front of people because it's all about that opportunity to go and see what value you're adding and how it works and yeah, continue to, to climb up the ladder, but get as many talks as you can to add as much value as you can so people start recognizing who you are. And then once you start getting invitations more to free talks, well, then that's when you understand that people are wanting you, and that's when you know you can start charging. And, you know, you go up. You go, I mean, pick a number that works for you and start small, and then all of a sudden you go more and more and more and more, and you eventually get to a number that you really feel comfortable about. Do you what kind of programs or tra trainings do you think I should um, go through to become a world uh, championship? I mean, I'm guessing. I'm not guessing, but I, I know that world championship was a great segue into a professional career, right? It was. Uh, what I do rec tell people though is, you know, there's been 88 world champions in the past 88 years. Well, there's been 88,000 professional speakers. So that is one small way that you can become a professional speaker. So I would say do, you don't have to win the world championship. You don't even have to do that. Yes, it was a nice title. And yes, it was a nice thing. And I, and I learned a lot through it. But I'm not a professional speaker because I'm the world champion. People don't hire me because I'm the world champion of public speaking. They hire me because my reputation of delivering valuable keynotes at their conference is known throughout the people that I work with. So that's why they're hiring me. So what I would recommend is find the audience that you want to speak to and then solve their problem. I call it apps, APS. So everything has, you have to have a unique apps and that means you have to have a unique audience, a unique problem and a unique solution to that problem. So you can't say like, I want to talk to girls. Like, no, that's too broad. That's not unique enough, right? But you could say, I want to talk to girls in college who are struggling with um, where, where they're going to, 
what they're going to do professionally. Now, that's a unique unique audience. And their problem might be like they don't know how to land their first job. And so the solution is you have this four-step solution that helps them find their dream job. So know your unique apps and then get started on developing the content around that and then selling it to the people who put together those events. Okay. Thank you, Ryan, um, for, for your answer. Absolutely. Yes, thank you. Um, delving into, you know, more uh, to, to learn more about where we can find you. What I, I know you were, you, your second book just got released. Mm -hmm. uh, could you tell us more about that and how we can find your resources? Yeah, the best thing is all of my social media, all of my my website, everything is averytoday.com. So A is an Apple, V is in Victor, E-R-Y, today.com. Um, the best thing that I would do is go to my new uh, – my website is averytoday.com. The new website launches um, August 10th, and then uh, my new YouTube channel will launch August 10th as well. So every week there will be a new video that comes out all helping um, – leaders, emerging leaders, learn strategies they can implement to be the and what it is that they do. So Avery Today is where I'm at, and uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Great. Thank you so much, Ryan.